Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to this edition of the Bourbon Rookie. Um, today I am doing, I'm finally jumping into the ring with what you see in front of me, Penelope. Um, I'm very excited to try these. Um, I've seen a million, not a million, but I've seen a bunch of reviews um, online for these and I figure why not? I don't have that many viewers anyway, so who's going to really care what the hell I'm reviewing? But uh, each one of these bottles <clears throat> was a little bit of a hike, not a hike, but um, they were each bought in different liquor store so Penelope is not so easy to come by unless I'm going store to store and hunting um, this I got I believe a total wine which is the 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 rosé cask finish um, which everybody's raving about um, this is the architect um, uh, finished in French oak staves and this is just the uh, beginners bourbon basically the uh, the 80 proof um, uh, uh, straight bourbon uh, and that's what I can get my hands on there's a toasted bourbon out there that they, they have a toasted bourbon they have a barrel strength um, which I don't have on the table and am I missing anything according to their website no I don't think so um, you know and Looks like if you're on their website, you could order online. Maybe they'll ship it to you, depending upon your area. I don't, they don't I don't think they ship in New York, so um, a lot of a lot of places don't. But at any rate, we're gonna get this thing going. The Four Green is basically their starter bourbon. This is what started the company. Um, it's a combination corn, rye, wheat, malted barley. Um, so it's a four grain. The architect, and I, I know I'm, I'm probably boring everybody here, but I could probably get most of the information off the architect. Basically, it says it's a straight, 104 proof. And the rose cast finish is 94 proof. It says straight bourbon. Oh, they all say straight bourbon. What the hell am I talking about? But enough of me boring everybody. I'm going to start. Probably shouldn't do this, but I'm going to start with the rosé. Now, it's odd because all these bottles remind me of bottles of wine. So it's kind of good packaging in the sense that, you know, it's just a simple P on the label and the way the bottles look. And these, for some reason... This has this glass cork. Do you hear that? That these don't have. These still have like a, a synthetic cork topper. I wonder why they decided to do that. Um, if anybody knows, put it up in the comments. Right off the bat, this smells like... You can smell the rosé coming off the glass. But it's 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 different. It's it's light. It's not like an overpowering. It's weird. It's almost like it's not an overpowering scent of a of a rose of a rose wine, right? There's a little bit of like a bubble gum for me. I'm getting like a bubble gum, which is which I'm enjoying. Or a strawberry bubble gum and a strawberry but I think it, I think I think the fact that it, it it's not overpowering like you're not like oh my god that's this smells like a bottle of wine um, there's something to be said for it yeah bubble gum strawberry maybe a little bit of peach but there's like a creaminess to the to the to to the nose Anyway, cheers, guys. Hmm. First, sorry. First impression. 
it's a little flat than what I was getting off the nose. The nose, I was getting all these vibrant scents. The first initial taste was a little flat. Definitely get the rosé. Getting a little bit of some of the fruit, but it's almost like a... F I don't know how to describe the flatness to what I was getting on the nose. Maybe it's just the first one. It's a long finish. I'll give it that. Let's give it another shot. I really wanted to concentrate on swishing it on the front part of my palate. So that's my watch. It's good. That helped get a little bit more of the oakiness, a little bit more of the whiskey texture. But yeah, to me, it's a little bit, it's very much of a flat, bubblegum, flat, strawberry fat, flat peach. It's, it's there, but it's, um, it's almost like the flavors are there, but they're muted. I don't, I don't know how else to say it. Anyway, let's, we'll do the architect. Now, I'm crazy. Maybe it's just something with my palate today. But I'm almost getting, I'm getting a lot of the wood, but it's a sweet wood. Getting like the, a corn, a corn, a caramel. I'm sorry guys, it's corn, there's caramel I'm getting, there's um, a little bit of the, uh, the French oak I'm getting, and I'm also getting like a little peachy note there. I don't know, hopefully I didn't, it, this isn't affecting my palate, but I'm getting almost like a peachiness to it. Cheers. Wow. It's definitely drier in the front part of the palate. And as it starts to uh, uh, move itself off the tongue, it becomes savory and almost a little bit buttery. There's a really nice um, oak, caramel presence getting the corn it's really good this is right in my wheelhouse this is like it's again another dull dulled profile I, but not dull in a bad way. It's it's light enough on the palate that it's not drinking like hot. It's not drinking like an oaky bourbon. The finish is still long on this too. As I'm talking, it's still it's still there. It's still leaving uh, the mouth coating. Uh, the viscosity is good. It leaves a nice oily creamy texture there's a there's a definitely a creaminess to these bourbons that i just don't get from other bourbons i don't know if any of you that have, have had these in particular get that that same profile um but wow i'm really glad i invested in these i gotta tell you even though um you know I'm burning a hole in my wallet with all these stupid reviews because, you know, I'm just doing this for fun, guys. Anyway, we're going to go on to the 80 proof. Probably going about this all wrong. Everybody's going to tell me you should have went from, you know, low to, low to high. But, hey. Now, this is obviously it's a little bit lighter on the nose. But there's still... I 
really trying to work on this nosing, guys, instead of doing this. I'm getting just like a light. It's kind of reminiscent of this. I'm getting like a weird, like a light rosé smell. And okay, maybe, maybe it's, I don't know if this affected my palate from here to here to here. And maybe I should have went the other way around. But it's almost like a uh, corn, is a heavy corn, a heavy corn profile in these. It definitely got some corn. Caramel, light caramel. And that's about it. A little bit of a rosé presence. I, I, the noses on these are, are very interesting and very different from my limited experience as the bourbon rookie. My limited experience in a lot of the bourbons that I've that I've had. You know, like if you're nosing a wild turkey, you're getting hit, you know, with that nose of, of caramel and, and, and um, you're getting cherry and you're getting, you know, it's a strong presence. These are just subtle, but something different. Very good. Even with this being 104 proof. Wow, this is probably the best E proof bourbon I've had yet. No joke. Now I see why a lot of people that review bourbons say that this is a really good starter's whiskey. It's a little high for the price point for a starter whiskey. I mean, normally you want to start. That's why everybody recommends a wild turkey because you're going for the, you're getting a high proof point and you're getting a lower price. However, in my market, and I don't know about yours, I'm starting to see wild turkey creep up just with the cost of inflation. So I'm already seeing like, you know, uh, 750 milliliter bottle that was $23.99 in my area, $24.99. Getting close to the $27.99, $28.99. You know, and it may go up again because of interest rates going up again uh, as of today. You know, all this stuff has a consequential uh, cost effect and uh, we're paying for it as consumers you know that's it with politics kids I promise yeah this is just really for 80 proof this is a flavor bomb this is it's just a sweet corn caramel tiny bit of butterscotch little bit you know, a little bit of a barrel, you know, an oak barrel presence, a little bit. You're getting the barrel, you're getting the barrel presence in the flick, but you're just getting a solid, sweet, good sipping whiskey. I wonder, like my wife, my wife doesn't like bourbon, uh, but I bet I can get her started on something like that. You know, that's really, really good. So, any rate... That's all I got on this. I mean, these are fantastic buys. If you can get uh, any of these Penelope bottles, I mean, do yourself a favor. Just add them to your collection because, you know, they're just that good. You know, especially when it's MGP. You know, these are just these are just blended whiskeys from what I get. I mean, they don't have the... I mean, it's a lot like... Uh, Widow Jane, right? In Brooklyn, they, they they don't have their own, but they're working on their own straight. They're working on their own whiskeys as we speak. It's just that they're aging them. So right now they're they're MGPing everything, but they're they're doing a, this this in particular, really good. I think I prefer this to Widow Jane. I I really do. Um, but anyway, that's gonna do it. Um, hopefully, you like the the, the video. I, I, you know, watching me drink bourbon, thank you if you're watching, and um, definitely give these guys a try. What I, sh you know, eh, should I do it, guys? I'm taking a Jason C thing from the Mash and Drum. You know Jason C, he likes to do the old, uh, I probably shouldn't ruin these because they're all really, really good. 
on their own merits. But Jason C, tribute to you, buddy. If you watch the mash and drum, you know that he likes to. Ooh. Now <laughs> that nose just ain't doing it. It it just changed everything to like a. Um, hate to say it, but it's a little leathery. Uh, a little leather, cedar. I feel like I'm at the beach. You know, and like, uh, or you're on a sailboat and you smell like a little bit of the ocean. Off the boat, there's a little bit more like a, of, a, of, of like a, a leathery, cedar, ethanol -y profile. You're not getting this. You know, you lost all that. You lost all the caramels. Anyway, let's see how it tastes. Cheers, guys. I've tasted worse, but no, it just totally killed each one of these individually. Because now I, I don't even know what I got here. It's like uh, everything I described on the nose, it's kind of like what I'm getting. It's like a. Uh, it's not horrible, it's drinkable. It's not even gonna be like, oh, this is awful, I'm gonna throw it in a uh, infinity bottle and hope for the best. But there's a weird... It almost tastes like straight corn now. You know, you know what I mean? And then like, if you really pay attention and bounce it around the palate, you kind of get a little bit of each one of these. But, eh, don't do that. These are all fantastic on their own. Don't do that. It's not horrible, but don't do that. Anyway, guys, stay tuned. Hopefully, you come back, watch more videos, give me a like, give me a subscribe, and we will see you next time on the Bourbon Rookie, guys. All right? Have a good one. Oh, and check me out on Patreon, please. I need members. Because now I see it's expensive to do this.